Company Parade Rest. I'd like to start off today with uh, introducing American Legion Chaplain of Billy Wall for the opening prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mankind, on this Memorial Day, we humbly, we, your humble servants, pay our respects to our departed firemen. They answered the call, no matter who you are. They came to help save lives and property. Bless them and keep them safe with you, O God. Also guide our living firemen in a way that they may always be successful. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Cover. We'll now have a hymn by the Georgetown High School Marching Band. Salute to the Dead by the Rifle Squad, followed by the playing of taps by Tyler Knapp and Matt Woods. Sergeant at Arms, salute the Dead. Parade members will now proceed to the Civil War Monument at Central and Andover Street.
Jim McLaughlin from the New Life uh, Church for the opening prayer. Shall we pray together, please? Father in heaven, we have gathered here this afternoon in this memorial park now to incorporate and to thank you for those who have willingly served in our armed forces and those who have given of their lives in both World War I and World War II. There are not many who remain from these places. But Lord, we are a free country because they were willing to sacrifice their lives. We thank you for them. And we want to also thank you, Lord, for those who are currently serving in our armed forces, whether they are stateside, or deployed in other parts of the world. Theirs is not an easy task, Lord, and we live in comfortable surroundings. We ask that you provide for their needs. We ask that you would keep them safe. And we ask, Lord, that you would give peace to the families of those who are deployed. Thank you, Lord, for such a wonderful turnout of the town folk on this beautiful day. And thank you that we have had over a hundred years of opportunity to celebrate Memorial Day. We lift up our country to you, Lord, and ask that we might be, even as our pledge says, one nation under God. And might we do it for your glory, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Cover. Okay, the band will now play the Star Spangled Banner.
and hut. Present arms. Distinct pleasure to introduce Captain Terry Hart to say a few words for us. Thank you. The general was unhappy. In fact, the general was often downright mad. Congress had changed his supply system to make it more efficient. Now, he could barely feed his army or clothe them. Congress had changed his medical system too, and now he was losing more of his soldiers in the hospital than he was losing on the battlefield. Congress had created a special board of oversight to give him ideas on how to improve both the army and the war effort. But of course, the people who were made up this board were people who wanted him out of the army and wanted to put another general in charge of the army. Men from Congress, merchants and wealthy merchants, even some generals, were making a play based on their ego for power. They even concocted or had a friend in the media who concocted a special expert on military affairs to critique the general with the idea that if they did that, they would obviously make him look bad and hopefully get the people to stop supporting him. It was the winter of 1777-1778. The general, was George Washington, the place was Valley Forge. General Washington would defeat these people who were trying to take over his position, just as he would also defeat the British a couple of years later. But he didn't do it for power. He did it for his country, and he did it for his soldiers. 230 years later, Nothing has changed. The strengths of our democracy are also its weaknesses, especially if we, the people, do not take the time to examine the issues in depth and make our voices heard through correspondence with our representatives or the ballot box if they don't listen to us. We are the government. We are responsible for sending our military people in harm's way. And we are the only ones who can ensure they have the best support system possible to maximize their chances of survival. Deaths occur in war. Today, we honor those we sent to war and who did not return. We have the obligation to honor their sacrifice by ensuring we carry out our responsibilities and hold our elected officials accountable for doing the right thing for the country, 
not for their party, not for their ego. May God hold in his hand those who have sacrificed on our behalf. God bless all those who serve in our military today, especially those in harm's way. And may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Color Guard, order arms. Hey, we're now gonna have a medley by the Georgetown uh, Marching Band. to read a short poem entitled Memorial Day, written short, shortly after the First World War by Theodosia Pickering Garrison. A handful of old men walking down the village street in worn, brushed uniforms, their gray heads high, a faded flag above them, one drum to lift their feet. Look again, O oh heart of mine, and see what passes by. There's a vast crowd swaying. There's a wild band playing. The streets are full of marching men or tramping cavalry, alive and young and straight again, and they ride to meet a mate again, the gallant souls, the great souls that live eternally. A handful of old men walking down the highways? Nay, we look on heroes that march among their peers. The great glad companions have swung from heaven's byways and come to join their own again across the dusty years. They are strong hands meeting, they are staunch hearts greeting, a crying of remembered names, of deeds that shall not die. A handful of old men, nay, my heart, look well again. The spirit of America today is marching by. On May 5th, 1868, General John Logan issued orders regarding the observance of the day of memorial for the fallen soldiers of the Civil War. Georgetown High School student Ashley Harper will now read those orders. General Logan's General Order. The 13th day of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion, and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet church in the land. In this observance, no form of ceremony is prescribed but posts and comrades will in their own way arrange such fitting services and testimonials of respect as circumstances may permit. It is the purpose of the Commander-in-Chief to inaugurate this observance with the hope that it will be kept up from year to year while a survivor of the war remains to honor the memory of his departed comrades. His, he earnestly desires the public press to call attention to this order and lend its friendly aid in bringing it to the notice of comrades in all parts of the country in time for simultaneous compliance therewith. Department commanders will use every effort to make this order effective. Thank you. 
We will now have a salute to the dead by the rifle squad, followed by the playing of taps. Sergeant at arms, salute the dead. Okay, uh, well, we're now going to have Dan Beaton, who's going to lead us in God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above. From the mountains, to the prairies, to the ocean, white with foam. God bless America, our home sweet home. God bless America. America, our home, sweet home. I'd like to thank all who participated in the parade and attended the ceremonies. Special thanks to our band director, David Kaminsky and the band, to the readers, the buglers, the scouts, and other marchers. Refreshments will be served at the VFW Hall on Andover Street for all participants. Please uh, feel free to come by. We look forward to seeing you. <laughs>